Stars Maligned, a Fated Encounter. Twilight Sparkle smiled as she trotted down the main road of Ponyville, ruffling her wings slightly. It was a warm, breezy, beautiful summer day, and not just because summer day had just cleared the clouds. Ponies were happily cantering to and fro. Bon Bon was chatting with her wife as they inspected a basket of carrots for their dinner date later, and Tulip Blossom was tucking one last flower into an arrangement while her two co-workers watched anxiously. Meanwhile, Dave and Port had just set out a brand new rack of finely crafted quills in his storefront, and Twilight was walking over to see if any of them would catch her interest, when she spied a lone daisy growing in the middle of the road. Spike, look! She said as she bent down to sniff it. Isn't it fascinating how flowers can bloom even in the strangest of places? Went a four-foot-long spear as it sailed over Twilight's head, embedding itself into one of the columns of Davenport's storefronts. Uh, Twy? Spike muttered. I think I'll put this in a flower pot when I get home. Twilight said, as she scooped the flower up with a burst of magic. I should probably ask Tulip how to care for it. As she trotted across the way to Tulip's flower stand, Spike tried tapping on her shoulder, but he usually had a stand on tiptoes to reach, and it was a hard enough thing to do when she was standing still. Hey, Tulip! Twilight asked. Yes, Miss Sparkle? Tulip mumbled, shivering slightly. Tulip was always quite nervous, and Twilight didn't really pay it any mind. What's the best way to care for a daisy, like this one? Oh, uh, same as most other flowers. Plenty of water, but make sure it's got somewhere to drain to, or you'll just have mud. Ponyville soil is perfect for them, so you don't need to worry too much about fertile- Excellent! Thank you, Tulip! Twilight smiled wide, as she turned to walk away, narrowly avoiding the sword that went whirling into Tulip's flower stand. Poor Tulip took one look at the decapitated daffodils and fainted on the spot. Twilight, I think- Oh! I almost forgot! Spike, take notes. I should write a lecture on the topic of perseverance. She floated a quill and parchment over to Spike, who took them without skipping a beat, though his expression grew more and more concerned. Um, she began. In any endeavor, no, uh, make that quest, that's more exciting. Twilight. It's very important to- Twy. Maintain a habit of- Hey, Twy. Perseverance. Duck! Screamed Spike, and Twilight hit the deck. A massive thunderclap echoed throughout the town square, and when Twilight lifted her head, four different vegetable stalls have been overturned. Tulip was still lying on the ground, posed dramatically, as her two best friends took turns fanning her with bouquets of tulips. Davenport was currently trying to pull the spear out of the wall. Meanwhile, Bonbon bon and Lyra were laying in a heap next to their scattered dinner, and Lyra was quietly reassuring Bonbon bon that yes, she really was okay. Oh, why didn't you tell me that Rainbow Dash was coming by? Twilight said. Spike simply pointed to the foot-wide cannonball currently resting in what used to be a barrel of apple cider. Spike, take a letter. So, y'all are sure that there ain't no supervillains running around? Applejack said, rubbing her chin. All six of them had come together, not for their monthly meeting, but for their first serious trouble since the incident with Tirek, Chrysalis, and Cozy. Equestria, up to this point, had been incredibly peaceful. Celestia had claimed that everything would be smooth sailing for at least a thousand years. It was something to do with the arc of the timeline or something like that. Twilight had been thoroughly confused by this. Time is only one dimension, so how can you describe an arc with only one dimension to work with? But she had accepted it when they'd gone nearly a year without a single villain, ne'er-do-well, or even mild inconvenience. I'm not sure, Twilight said, leaning over the cutie map. It had insistently refused to show them the source of the problem. Their marks were not glowing, nor flashing, not even on the map. Oh, maybe the bad guy's not on the map, Pinky said. Maybe the bad guy's in a super secret moon base. That's what I would do if I was the bad guy anyway. Wouldn't Luna have said something if there was a moon base? Twy asked. That's what makes it super secret, Pinky said. I don't think it's a moon paste, Pinky. Moon base flutters. Moon based? Moon, based on what? While Fluttershy and Pinky bickered over the moon and what might be on it, Rarity took Twilight aside. Dear, are you sure that there aren't any, um, family friends? She whispered. That you might have forgotten to tell us about? I'm sure. Twilight said. Actually. She added. Actually? Actually. Twilight hummed, tapping her chin thoughtfully. My parents don't talk much about the ponies that they know, so it's possible that they know some pony that I don't. So, you say that someone threw a spear at your- Yes, Dad. 
And then they fired a cannonball. No, Mom, they threw a sword at me first. Nightlight and Twilight Velvet shared a glance. Uh, honey? Nightlight said softly. There is something that we have to tell you. You, uh, you see. Twilight Velvet cleared her throat. When you were born, we actually had two fillies. Bouncing little bundles of joy, Nightlight added. Oh, yes, Velvet murmured. But, um, well, the doctor said... They said that your daughter has some indicators for VTS. VTS? Twilight asked. Villainous, Villainous twin, twin syndrome. syndrome. Her parents answered in unison. Oh. We signed some paperwork, did some looking around, and found a boarding school for her to stay at. The doctor said that being raised by an imperious and uncaring educational system is an important part for development for fillies and colts with VTS. Nightlight beamed, proud of his intelligent decision. Sadly, uh... Twilight Velvet sighed, putting a hoof on Twilight Sparkle's shoulder. I'm afraid your twin sister is... going to try and kill you. We figured that she'd send a letter when she was ready. Nightlight said. I didn't think that she would just... show up. Oh my gosh. Twilight whispered. We know, honey. I have a twin sister! Twilight shouted, spreading her wings with glee. Why didn't you say so? W well, it never really came up. Nightlight mumbled. Like your father said, we thought that she would send a letter. Velvet stammered. I have to go tell every pony. Wait, what? The sound of a long-distance teleportation cut Velvet off. Moments later, a chandelier that had been in the family for generations landed with a crash, right where Twilight was just standing. Who's cleaning that up? Nightlight muttered. Oh, Nighty, we'll clean it up together. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, my guiding star. It had taken some time, and a not insignificant amount of hoof work, but Twilight had finally set up the perfect meeting for her evil twin. Spotlights were hidden among the trees, the town square had been swept, all the town's ponies had been warned to stay at least two miles away from town, with air raid sirens to be used in the event that two miles turns out to be not enough miles, and Twilight had written up the perfect speech, created from marathoning a dozen classic films about showdowns between fated rivals. And of course, she had all of her friends standing by with the elements. Um... Twilight shuffled through her index cards. Malign Star, I'm calling you out! Across the square, a figure slinked out of the shadows. She looked quite a lot like Twilight Sparkle herself, though she lacked wings and had a streak of neon green running through her mane, where Twilight's natural magenta would be. Very well, sister! Star screamed. It's about time that you faced me, and how fitting that this Twilight will be the Twilight of your Twilight. Twilight cringed internally at the abuse of a perfectly good noun, but soldiered on. This town can only be big enough for one two of us! She blinked and shuffled her notes again. Drat! I knew High Prancer shouldn't have been in the sample list. Did you seriously make an average one-liner? Star shouted. It's built out of one of the most common words in multiple westerns and one butchered Scottish mythos movie. Wow. You're such a nerd. Star shook her head. Anyways, prepare to meet thy doom, Twilight Sparkle. I'll prove once and for all that you're the inferior sister. And with that, Malign Star galloped forth, screaming a battle cry. Only for Twilight to sit there, and open her hooves. As Star collided with her twin, they tumbled briefly, and Twilight wrapped her hooves around her evil twin in a not-bone-crushing death grip. Star opened her eyes, her battle cry petering out. Are you... are you giving me a hug? Yes, that's what you do with siblings. You hug them. But... but, but I tried to kill you! Star whined. I'm friends with Rainbow Dash. She nearly kills me on a regular basis. Heck, I'm friends with Starlight Glimmer, and I'm pretty sure that she tried to unexist me. Huh? So, she did... Star muttered. How did she do not do time travel? Twilight said. Star rather wisely stopped talking. Somewhere else, Trixie trotted into the living room of her favorite wagon-turned-cottage, with a great big grin on her face and an itty-bitty box in her magical grip. Oh, Starlight! Trixie just got a package. She placed the box on the coffee table, opening it. Trixie, did you order more- Trixie did not order any illicit substances off of the pony net. Oh, is that the 32 new kit? It's not the kit, it's the results. 
Trixie threw her hooves up and did a little squee as she pulled out a slip of paper. It says here... Uh, let me see. Family tree, family tree... But there it is! Trixie pointed to a single line on the paper, directly above Trixie and next to Jackpot. Trixie's mother! Oh, I'm so excited! I finally found out that my mom is... Twilight... Velvet? Let me see. Glimmy pulled the paper out of Trixie's hooves and squinted. That's... Isn't that Twilight's mom? Trixie and Glimmy stared at each other for a moment. Uh, uh, let's see yours! Trixie shouted, shoving another scrap of paper into Starlight's hooves. Well, I already know who my parents are, but my mom never really talked about my grandparents on my dad's side. Glimmer said as she looked over the paper. And that's... Wait. Twinkle? Velvet? Who's that? Who's that? Trixie said, barely able to contain her excitement. That's... That's Twilight's grandma. Trixie and Glimmy shared another confused glance. Does that mean that we're... Trixie won't tell, if you won't tell. But what about the threesome of Twilight? Shh. It's okay. Damn, son. Things got kinky at the end right there. Jeez. Uh, anyway. I actually do wonder if Twilight would ever join in that. My guess is no, but I might be surprised. Now let's get on to our super appropriate and super innocent donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Crucii, Strix, Zar630, Delta Omega, RuneScythe9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Endurai 63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David e. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mr. ECU, Leslie Prickett, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, and Nissa Rusan. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.